until we got this going. Okay, we're live on air, Dustin. Good to meet you here over at Google Hangouts. <laughs> yeah, good to be here. Okay, well, so I'm in <laughs> Seattle, so it's not too late for me, even though I got my Detroit hat on tonight. All right, on. <laughs> Where are you at? I'm in uh, you're near Edmonton, Alberta, oh, Canada. Nice. Okay, awesome. You know, Jarrett Luft, who's doing the Gerbil f uh, fork of chili pepper, is um, up in that area. Oh, really? Yeah, actually, I think he's in Edmonton. So I don't know. That's cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, but, yeah, so I think just for the viewers here, because we're just recording this quickly, you had reached out to me just saying that you want to get started from scratch. You've got a shape Oko, you've got a tiny G. And you want to try out chili pepper and and like help help me understand how from scratch you're at. Have you even configured the tiny G for your like millimeters per step and any of that? No, I haven't done that. Um, I'm mid build on my Shapeoko. It's over there, and all my tiny G is over here. Um, so yeah, I'm just coming at this from a total amateur beginner standpoint here. I have no problem assembling the machine, wiring it up, and all that, but just trying to get everything to work on a Mac has been a little <clears> overwhelming <throat> for me. So okay. I had I did test uh, the uh, the the stepper motors and all that when I first got the shape Oko following the instructions there. I can't even remember what program I used, but I managed to get them to turn. So I know it works. I just can't get it to communicate regularly and do what I want. So and just reading on the wiki and all that stuff, it's just way over my head. Okay, totally. Okay, so to help me understand, though, at least do you have the Tiny G plugged in over USB to your computer? Yeah, it's plugged in right now. It's uh, not the power supply is not plugged in, so it's not powered up. But everything's plugged in there. I just gotta. Okay, and then okay, but it's at least on USB, right? So you can do the serial communication to it. Yeah. Okay, so if, that's. If I, well, if I knew how to do it. <laughs> okay, well let's let's maybe go through that a little bit. Um, the. You don't even really have the shape Oko fully assembled, then you're saying either with the steppers on it? Uh, yeah, like the steppers are installed and all that. I, it's pretty much to the point where um, I've just got to wire them up into the tiny G once I get it going here. But Is there any way to maybe just show some quick video of where the board is at and um, if there's any, um, if you actually have the steppers hooked into it with the correct uh, polarity and all that fun stuff? Because if not, we'd go through some of that. Uh, I guess, yeah, I could move them over onto my desk there and or wire them in. Um, or are, are you on a laptop or are you on a um, PC? Yeah, I'm on a laptop. Yeah, I mean, you could always just kind of swing the laptop around and show the lay of the land. Uh, you know, like, do you want you just, just my shape Oko sitting on my desk over here. I'm just sitting on my couch in my office. but. Uh, well, yeah, I just kind of want to get a little bit of feel of what wires are connected where to kind of help. Because cause I could walk you through, like, from from scratch, um, you know, like, even, even figuring out the right way to hook the motors up. But it sounds like maybe that part. Yeah, or, that, or, that's no issue whatsoever. Like, it's just uh, getting the, um, I was, I, whether it was uh, TGFX or, like, that's where I started. I was like, okay, I'll get TGFX fired up once I get this going. So that was my game plan. And then... Uh, once I realized that I couldn't just do that, I needed net beans and a whole pile of other programs that I didn't understand. Then everybody started saying, use chili pepper, use chili pepper. So I was like, okay, perfect. That's going to be the thing. But I mean, yeah, as far as wiring the stepper motors, that's no problem. Like I've got, I know exactly how to, where, how to wire them up and what configuration stuff like that. I mean, with the tiny G, that's pretty straightforward, but. <clears throat> okay. Well then maybe you want to just focus on getting um, the serial port JSON server going on your Mac so that you can communicate with it to the tiny G and then we'll we'll get chili pepper loaded up and pointed at that. Yeah, that would be awesome. <clears throat> yeah, let's do that. So, if you could share your Mac OS X screen. I'm assuming that's what you're going to run it from or do you want to run it from uh, like uh, to your shape Oko? A lot of people are running it from Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone Black where they run Serport JSON server on a little tiny cheap computer. And then they just run Chili Pepper off their laptop because it connects over uh, the network. Okay, maybe in the future. For now, I was just planning on using my laptop in the shop there to run everything. Okay, perfect. Then, and, and your laptop's Mac, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to share your screen, I can kind of we can get at least that part going. 
Yep, you bet. <clears throat> um, if you give me a little hint on how to do that, I will absolutely do it. Yeah, so in the Google uh, Hangouts, if you mouse over, the upper left corner is a little green icon screen share. Okay, It'll yeah. sort of slide in. And then you should just be able to share your whole screen from that. Yep, the desktop. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then while that's coming up, let's see. It's not showing it just yet. It says I'm screen sharing. There we go. Oh, okay, right. You're showing my whole thing uh, full screen. Okay, yep. so let's maybe um, go swap over. Can you load Chili Pepper in your browser? ChiliPeppers.com slash TinyG? Yep. Okay. And now you are in... Are you in um, Safari? Yes. Okay, so that's one of the things. Safari has just completely lost touch with keeping up with the Joneses. So that black area in the middle is the 3D viewer, which is WebGL, which is like one of the bleeding edge technologies, and really only Chrome and Firefox will work. Okay, off to a bad start. So, yes, yeah, sadly, Apple is just losing its uh, its edge. Okay. <clears throat> I don't even have Chrome yet. This is a fairly new computer, so... Okay. No, that's cool. It'll, it'll install pretty quick. Yeah, I would say most people are using Chrome. <clears throat> um, some people are using Firefox, but I think Chrome is just incredible. And so that, to me, is a big reason why I even started going down the road of Chili Pepper was the browser has gotten so amazing, especially with WebGL. It just kind of changed the whole game. Oh, okay. Did you want me to plug in the power supply and power up my tiny yeah, Jeep? Yeah, if you could while that's running, yeah. Let's get this yeah, going. We'll, we'll do a bunch of stuff in parallel because I bet you you do not have Xcode installed on this computer. I, I actually do already. You do? Yeah, just that awesome. Xcode app. Awesome. Most people don't have Xcode installed. but Well, like I said, I've been trying to follow the steps and just like I get lost. Like I said, I'm not... Wait. I'm not okay. proficient with all of this, so. Cool. Yeah, you don't even have to have it running. It's just got to have the compiler in the path, which it does automatically once you install Xcode from the um, Apple App Store. Oh, okay. Cool. Chrome. Looks like it's done. All right. Now do. Um, We'll do that later. Um, yeah, exactly. Tenergy. Um, you get an extra L in there, I think, in Chile. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, so WebGL should come up nice. And it does. All right. Oh, yeah, that looks that. much better. Now you can kind of mouse around on a 3D viewer and kind of play with it. It's really fun. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's so sweet. And then <laughs> let's just try this for the heck of it. Turn on the shadow. Um, just to the In the 3D viewer toolbar, it's the little, uh, yeah, that cogwheel pull down. Okay. Do the, Turn on the shadow. I'm always curious. I turn that off by default now because a lot of people's graphics cards were... Yours looks okay. It's it's that shadow as as simple as it is is like one of the super cutting edge pieces of um. It's using this shader. Ah, it looks pretty good. Okay, so in the lower right corner, did you download the serial port JSON server code yet? No, I didn't. Okay, so if you scroll all the way down to the lower right, it's the whole serial port. You know, yeah, that. And you're going to have to, because you're on a Mac, you're going to have to download the source code. Um, you know, I wish I had a better way of getting this more automated where the, the Mac build was up there too. But you're going to want to go, yeah, keep scrolling. There you go, Mac, Mac OS X. Compile for GitHub. Yeah, now, 
<clears throat> ultimately, we're just going to go through the README here. But what you got to do, scroll down a little bit to the steps for the install, which it sounds like you've already kind of gone through, or at least tried. So how to build. Okay, so if you're on a Mac. So let's go through these steps. So what we've got to do is open up a terminal window. Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't have full screen this thing. That's okay. <clears throat> and then did you install Golang yet? Uh, yes, I did, I think. I don't know if it's type done go. right. Just type go from the command line there and hit enter, and let's see if it's there. Okay, good, you've got it. And then I want to make sure, though, that you've got your go path variable. So can you just type, um, I guess, um, maybe just type go path. All one word? Yeah, all uppercase. Oh, all one word, all upper. Yeah, I think your environment variables are case sensitive. Um, type env. Uh, lowercase on env. Oh, I guess it took it. Um, yeah, it looks like you do not have a go path in there. Okay, so see that number, that step four, define your go path variable? This is your personal working folder for your Go code. What I would do is make a folder in your Dustin Home directory, just call, just call it like Go source maybe, G-O-S-R-S-C, S-R-S-C, S-R-C, <laughs> sorry. So you just do oh. a, a make, you could do a make dir right there from the command line if you want, M-K-D-I-R. If you don't want to open up the graphical interface, uh, D-I-R, M-K-D-I-R. Okay. Space. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. Repeat that, and then you got to give it the name. Space. So, so MKDIR space, and then go source. So G O S R C. And all we're doing is making a little folder to hold the the go uh, code. Yeah, there you go. And then change directory into go source. So CD space go source. There you go. Is Hit enter. Good? Yep. And then um, if you type PWD, it, that spits out your current path. Okay, so that's going to become your your go path. Okay. So you want to just say, um, I guess the way to do it on the Mac, I think you type the word, actually just set it, so go path all uppercase equals and then that slash users, slash Dustin, slash go source. Go Sorry, path. once again, go path. <clears throat> yeah, equals, so an equal sign, and then that slash users, slash Dustin, slash go source. You can cut and paste it, or you can just start typing it. It's case sensitive. The okay. trick is to type, like, the letter U and then hit the tab key. Type the letter U. Hit the uppercase, though, because it's oh. case sensitive. <laughs> That's all right. And I hit tab. Yeah. Uh, it didn't quite fill it in because it's users. Okay. One of the, it's funny. You must never do command line completion. No, I don't. Oh, like yeah. I said, like treat me no, like a five-year-old. You're because... missing the word users. So one of the reasons I always t tell people about command line completion oh. is that it makes sure everything is spelled perfectly correctly. So type S yeah. and then hit tab. There you go. And then D, capital D, and then hit tab. And then okay. G, and then hit tab. So it just it fills in everything for you. Okay, oh. hit enter. Hit enter. And now you've set an environment variable. Type env again, and let's see if it's in the list. And it's not. So hit the up arrow to repeat your last command, and then up arrow oh. again. And then go to the beginning of the line with your arrow keys and type the word export space. You want to export the go path. And now hit enter. Now type env. <clears throat> and hopefully it's in your list. There it is. Okay, you're done. Now change direct. Oh, you're in go source. Okay, now see that step six in the readme? Yep. Maybe just cut and paste that. That go get GitHub. With that, there you go. So paste that into the terminal window. And it should just do it. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Cool, it's working.
it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, yeah, it's working. Okay. It's, it's probably just pulling everything down. <clears throat> and then, um, is, you, is your CPU chugging at all? Uh, I'm nope. not seeing anything. Doesn't appear to be. Everything seems to be working good. Huh. Um, I forgot to give it the whole HTTPS path. I doubt it, though. Hit enter again. Hmm. Okay, in another window, or maybe open up your um, your finder to go to that folder. I want to see if it's pulling, if it's making directories and creating files. <clears throat> so it's probably just in your home directory. Um, and there should be a go source folder now in your home directory. And so it wouldn't be favorites. It'll be just go to like your base home directory. Where is that? You can hold down the option, the Apple key, and over and click on all my files up at the top of that window, and it should show you um, the hierarchy. It, see where it says all my files up at the top top of that window? Um, like the top middle. I don't know all my files. I'm looking. No, you gotta. It's like in the gray area. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Hold down the Apple key and click it. Or the Option key. If you hold it down, it's supposed to show. God, maybe it doesn't work anymore. <clears throat> um. Doing something. Go, go. To, there you go. Oh, oh, oh my files. Go, just go to your C drive then. Or, I'm sorry, your your main uh, hard drive. Let's do this. And then go to yeah Mac HD. Go to users, Dustin, and then go source. There we go. And then oh there we go. So it's working. And then go into source. And then GitHub.com. Cool. So it is pulling it down. Go in John Lauer and go into Serport JSON server. Yeah, you've got pretty much everything. Go back to your terminal window. Maybe it's done running. Oh, it does. Okay, now step. See step seven? Change directory into GitHub John Lauer Serport JSON server. Yep. You want to type cd space. And then type the letter G for Git. Actually, I think it's, it's probably source. So, uh, yeah, hit tab, though, to make sure it's spelled correct. There you go. Now G for GitHub. So do G tab, and then J tab, and then S tab. There you go. Hit enter. Now type go build, go space build, which is step eight. <clears throat> and we are building. Done. Now, type ls and type dot slash and then you can type serial dash port dash shade and server, but just do s and hit tab. It'll put the wrong file in there. So do, you know, e should type the letter E, and then tab, and hit enter. And you are now running your own serial port JSON server. Cool. Cool. Okay, now let's go to uh, your Chrome browser. Back with Chili Pepper. Looks like it's your first tab. And then go scroll to the lower right, and inside uh, the serial port widget, you can scan. It's way up at the top. Nope. Or, yeah, well, you just missed it. But type, click the scan for hosts. And what this does is it pings your, hit, click that scan button right up at the top oh. there. It, it scans your whole network for your IP addresses. Okay. And it found it. So go ahead and see that 192.168.1.71. That's your yep. port JSON server. Should I write that down or anything? Um, no, I mean, you can, you can always scan it or figure out what your IP address is from other okay. methods. So go ahead and click it, and it'll connect. 
Now, do you have the Tiny G hooked into this computer already? Yeah, it's plugged in right now. Okay, so it's probably one of those, maybe that USB serial one further down there. See how it's listing all your your ports yeah. that it found? Now, see how that message says, for your CNC device, please choose Tiny G buffer in the pull-down before connecting. Just keep in mind you want to do that and pick the correct baud rate since this is your first time. It will remember that um, when you come back subsequent times. Okay. Oh, you wanted to pick the buffer as um, Tiny G. Oh, did I ruin it now or what? Or can I? I... Oh, okay, here we go. No, yeah, there you Tiny go. G. Tiny G. Didn't take it. What's it doing? It's not showing it as having done as Tiny G. Hmm. Can you disconnect again? Are you sure that's your Tiny G, by the way? Uh, there's nothing else plugged into this computer. Okay. So try and change it again to Tiny G. That that buffer. Oh, something's something's wrong with that. Okay, can you go back to your terminal and kill the serial port JSON server? Just Control C. Control C. Okay. See how it disconnected. Now, yep. hit the up arrow to start running it again. <clears throat> so up arrow brings your last command. Hit enter. It'll launch again. And then go back to chili pepper and say reconnect. And then this time try and do it with the... Oh, wrong port. It's the USB serial one. Okay. And now it is saving as tiny g, so go ahead and connect now. And it puts it up at the top. Scroll up. Let's see if it's got it set at tiny g. Oh, good. All right, you're in good shape. I would, for now, maybe minimize that webcam widget just so it's not in the way. It's that little up arrow yeah. to the right of the power. Yeah, there you go. And then, um, ooh, this is good. Your buffer, you got data, so you're hooked. So I would expand maybe the axes tab just so you can kind of see the position, and maybe you could jog around a little bit. I, I always set the font smaller. Oh, okay. Room. It's that little, yeah, that little A. Because getting enough room is always tough. You can minimize the tiny G widget too, um, just to get a little bit smaller. But you're good. You're you're sending commands now. You don't have any motors hooked up, right? No, but I can see it flashing there. Um, I've got. Yeah, and you can see it's moving your Y axis when you do that. So. Yep. So I guess a couple quick things. Um, I always maybe set it to point one or one in the move by button. Um, by. Yeah, it's on the right side of the axes. Yeah, I see yeah. It here. Which. Yeah, so you're at point oh one. You're in millimeter mode. <clears throat> so I always do the one. But I wanted to just show you some quick shortcut keys there. Okay. Um, if you hold down the shift key, you'll see that it moves to the move by. If you hold down shift and control, it goes to the one. I okay. Think the, I think on the Mac it might be shift and option. But it's just quick ways. So like if you set it to point one by clicking it, because you're on point oh one, the shift key will, will shift it up to the one. So now hold down shift and then click like the Y or the X jog button. It's just some quick accelerator. Oh, okay, I see. You know, just some little tricks. Um, of course, you're only in jog mode when that blue outline is around the axes. The moment you click off of it, go ahead and click off it. You'll see it's not blue anymore, and you're not jogging. <clears throat> okay, yep. Yeah. Um, so that's just a little pointer there. The... Um, some other things. Oh, in the so see that in the tiny G widget, the uh, pause sort of red button, and then the tilde and the percent. Yep. That is, it's not really an emergency stop, but it's sort of an E stop. So oh, okay. just in case anything's going wacky, uh, I I can't call it an emergency stop because those those are real hardware buttons. You know, if if for some reason your network connection goes down between your serial port JSON server and Tiny G. Of course, none of that's going to work, but um, 
it does come in handy, and then that little tilde resumes. But the percent wipes out everything. Okay. <clears throat> Meaning, when you start sending G code or even jog commands, it queues it to the serial port JSON server. And in fact, go ahead and do some jogging. Go go click up in the axes of widget or click the jog button to turn on jog mode. And then just start using the keys on your keyboard. So just like hold your left arrow key or something. <clears throat> And you should start seeing commands sort of queue up. See how your buffers um, go into 29? Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty good. So it, what I was trying to show is that you were actually down on the serial port widget. See where it's zero um, below where you picked the tiny G buffer? Yep. When it's really buffering a lot, serial port JSON server can buffer up to 25,000 lines. And um, I'm just saying that when you pause it, with that red button, it pauses all commands, and the tilde will resume, but the percent will wipe out everything, including the 25,000 lines you've buffered into it, and it just has to sort of re-upload it all again. Not, not a big deal. It's actually by design, but just gives you an idea on some of the stuff. Do you want to send the G code to it, actually? Um, sure. Okay, so I would expand the G code widget on the left side... And, you know, you can resize these a little bit. Actually, can you maximize this fully just so we've got a lot of room to see it all? Like, go full screen with the browser? Yep. Okay. And then um, you can you can resize it a little bit so you can see a little bit of the port console, which I would recommend for, for just now looking. Um, so, so go to the bottom of it and drag it up a little so it shows a few less lines. <clears throat> there you go. And then the serial port console should resize automatically. Okay. okay. So go ahead and hit play um, in the G code widget, and it'll start sending commands. Okay, now you don't need to pause on M6 commands, so you can just click off of this or uncheck that. Okay. <clears throat> And then uh, you want to unpause the widget. It's just that there's a tool change command there, and it sort of auto pauses um, on its own, which is pretty cool. And so yep. now it's continuing to send. Notice your buffer is uh, is down at four or three, which is good. It means all the commands are queued up beautifully. Um, so, yeah, so it's running. And Perfect. you can kind of zoom in while it's running. Um, that's pretty fun. The zoom would be a scroll. Yeah, there you go, a pinch and zoom. Yeah. If you've got a touch screen, you can pinch and zoom too, but no Macs have touch screen yet. <laughs> Apple's losing its edge again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess just a couple other things. Um, You'll see a lot of those colors in the G code widget. There's a sent, queued, written, and completed status. It's giving you an idea of all the buffering that's going on. So see over in the lower right corner, it's you got like 338 lines queued up. Yep. So you're what's happening is Chili Pepper's sending those lines up to the JSON server. JSON server is just uh, buffering them all in memory just to make sure it's got a really nice pipeline to max feed the tiny G so the tiny G has the best ability to plan all of its moves and, and, and go really quick and smooth. So everything's working great. I mean, this is, this is perfect. I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, just a couple questions that I have. Again, like, um, so if I closed everything out right now, unplugged my tiny G, um, just shut down absolutely everything and wanted to open up chili pepper again what steps would I have to go to to get to this point would it recognize the serial port again would it just be a matter of connecting you know what, let's, let's do it just for the heck of it because actually you just finished running the job so go okay. ahead let's just close your browser completely okay Let me get out of this full screen here because I tried to make sure that um, when you come back and connect that it tries to, you know, remember everything so that you can be as lazy as possible. Now, if you close that terminal window, which did you just do? 
Oh, I think we just lost you. <laughs> That's funny. We lost him because his um we lost him because he closed his browser and it was running his Google Hangout session. So I'm sure he'll dial back in here in a second. Uh, if not, I'll try and dial him back. Uh, let's see. Control room. So we can dial him back. Chat. Let's see. Is there a way to re add people? Here we go. Dustin. T H. Penner. Sorry, I'm, re I'm just trying to re add him. Okay, see if we can get him back. Ah, you're back. Sorry about that. <laughs> you must have closed your browser that was running Google Hangouts. Yeah, I got a little close happy there. So, but uh, let me just okay. share my screen again here and. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now let's just get back and reopen Chrome. Yeah, I did, and I was uh, everything reconnected. I was praising you until I all of a sudden realized you weren't there anymore. So <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, so let me show you a couple other things here um, before we sign off, because that was pretty slick. That was awesome. It is a, share your yeah, share your screen again, and then um, actually, here's what I'll do. I'll make your screen be the main thing. Okay. And I want you to maximum, make it full screen again just so we can kind of see it. I mean, screen real estate is always tough in Chili Pepper, and I, I do want to kind of make it even better. But go to the cogwheel options for the G-code widget. And I want to show, uh, see that pre-upload? You have no pre-uploading, which I, uh, I agree. In fact, I'm thinking I'm going to get rid of the pre-upload. But do the multi-line mode. So say yes, use multi-line mode, and just set it to be 100 lines. Okay. And then make those be every, scroll down a little bit more, make those be every 1,000 milliseconds. So every one second, basically. Okay. And then um, you can just click off of this, and it saves it. Okay. Now... You have 571 lines, so technically within six seconds we should have everything uploaded. And I want to just do a trick where we upload everything in six seconds. You'll see the buffer, the serial port buffer, queue up, and then I want you to close the browser and then reopen the browser. Don't kick off Google uh, Hangouts, though, this time. <laughs> and you'll see that it's it runs the job the entire time, even though your browser is closed. Oh, so if I lose connection, it'll keep going. It, right, and I, I want you to then reconnect and it'll keep going. So it's just, it points out what's really happening is that the JSON server, once it's got the commands, it just blindly sits there sending them off and trying to send feedback back to you if you're available. You could also open two browsers or three or four or multiple machines into the JSON server and get reflected copies of all status updates that you could run this on multiple machines just to watch it, like even on your phone where you can like step outside and watch the machine running. Okay. Which is what makes it so cool and like really to me a lot cooler than any other CNC controller. So go ahead and hit play and look at the buffering in the serial port cons or yeah, widget in the lower right. Yep. And at this point everything's buffered. So go ahead and close the browser now. It's running the job. The job takes, you know, 10 minutes or so. Uh, not 10 minutes, I don't know, 5 minutes. Okay, now reopen it. And then it should reconnect to the thing, and there you are. It's like you never disappeared.
Yep, all the lights were still flashing away. Yeah, and, and your job would have been running fine. There would have been no hiccups. So pretty cool stuff. Um, also, just to some other little tricks, go ahead and hit the red stop pause button in the middle of the job here. Okay, everything stopped. Yep. See everything's queued, 385 commands are queued down there. Go ahead and hit the green um, tilde to resume. And it just keeps moving along. Nice. Go ahead and hit the stop again. And now hit the percent to wipe it all. Now here's what's interesting. You're on line 227. Okay, and that black check mark means that's been completed. Doesn't that mean executed, by the way. It doesn't mean completed. But if you mouse over and say set as a new start position, which some people think is dangerous, go ahead and click that. You can now pick up where you canceled your job. Now hit the play button, and it'll start at line 227. <laughs> that's now, no, no other CNC software that I know of does that. But partly, it is a little dangerous, so I just warn you, it's powerful, but if you've got your end mill stuck inside your material and you do that, it could be bad because it, it's not super accurate. You might actually have been five lines prior. Um, yeah. But where a lot of people use it is they're doing laser cutting and things like that, um, and then it doesn't matter because oh. you're, you don't have like an end mill shoved inside a material. Um, so that little flyout guy is pretty cool. That's also pretty handy if if something did get messed up and you want to sort of jog around and then resume. Okay. Um, one of the things that's coming up soon is is actually going to be another a fifth checkbox sent, queued, written, completed, and executed, where Chili Pepper will know exactly which line is being executed, as opposed to just which one is completed. Completed just means it was sent to the buffer planner of the tiny g. That doesn't necessarily mean it's completed because that buffer planner holds 32 commands. Okay. You know, so, yeah, I think that's a pretty good uh, rundown. You know, the macros, I would say. What kind of stuff are you going to do, PCBs or? Uh, woodworking. Woodworking, okay. Yeah, yeah so you're not going to really necessarily need things like auto level. Um, what what is interesting though, when you're woodworking, I imagine, of course, like everybody, you're trying to find your zero Z position a lot. Yeah. And what I've done for working with other materials is I do a little um, PCB, like little piece of copper with a wire solder to it. Yeah. And I connect it to Tiny G Z min, and then I go into the auto level, and then I attach an alligator clip to the end mill to the bit. Oh, so, so as soon as it touches it knows exactly. Yes, but then you have to subtract the width of the 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 copper, which I know for me is exactly like 1.75 millimeter. So I can yeah. find like a, a zero position really fast. Uh, but you know it doesn't matter, right? With wood you probably just sort of jog it on the Z till it starts cutting it. Yeah, put a dollar bill in between or whatever and get it fairly close. Yeah, so you know different ways to do it. And then do you do software development? Like, software you development? Code? Yeah, like are you a coder at all? No, not at all. That's why I was saying my, my biggest fear when I got the Shape Oko was going to be CAD and CAM, and I realized that's no issue whatsoever for me. Like <laughs> getting yeah. it into G-Code well, and over to this thing has been the struggle for me. Yeah, okay, then you probably won't be doing much with the macros, but maybe just go ahead and click that macro button in the upper left corner. Um, yeah, I will say a lot of people are getting huge value out of the macros. So go ahead and um, go to that little book icon. There's some sample macros in there. Um, like the, let's see, send G code, for instance. Click on that macro. Right, so... Here you're able to send G code through code. So maybe go ahead and just hit run on that macro and it should move your um, your CNC to the X0, Y0. But let's say you want to do like a little for loop where you sort of went up the X, over on the Y, back on the X, but you want to do it through code rather than actual like G code. You can yep. do all that here. 
and um, and so just but you can do a lot with macros. So a big thing um, that like a lot of folks are doing is they're trying to control maybe an Arduino in parallel to the Tiny G to do things like flip a laser on and off. So just some pretty powerful stuff. But you know, again, you're saying you're not necessarily going to do any coding. So well, I mean, this is a good good reason to get into it, anyways. So. Yeah. Well, good. I think that's a pretty good rundown. Unless you got other things you're curious about. Uh, I just noticed X, Y, and Z, and uh, the shape Oko is dual Y. So I know I can wire in the tiny G like I would the gerbil, and just have them uh, the wires flip together in the, uh, on the same motor and just utilize three motors. Um, how would I set this up to run all four motors on the tiny G? Yeah, okay, so there's a couple ways. The way I do it, I do have two motors on my, I guess that's my Y, um, and I run the um, second Y motor off the fourth driver on the Tiny G. So I have massive torque then on my Y. Yeah. And the trick is to just reverse the polarity in the uh, Tiny G motor setting so that, you know, as it's stepping, and you attach both to the Y axis. Yeah. So have you set that up? Because that's, that's definitely just a tiny G setting, and then Chili Pepper doesn't know. It's just sending a Y move, and Tiny G figures out that magic. No, I haven't set that up. Um, Go Turn off the macro so that it goes away. Minimize the G-code widget. I just want to show the serial port widget. Oh, it's just you just unclick the button that you clicked in the upper left corner to turn on okay. the macros. Yeah, and then minimize the G-code widget. And then in the serial port widget, go down there and type dollar sign um, maybe Y. And then hit enter. I don't remember all the commands. Okay. You can make this bigger if you want. You can resize that little serial port console to get stuff to flow better. Um, so your Y... Actually, I think what you would want to do is just type dollar sign one for the, the the first motor. And your first motor is mapped to the X. So then type dollar sign two. And that's mapped to Y. Type dollar sign three. That'll probably be mapped to your Z. Yep. And then type dollar sign four. And I bet you that's mapped to the A. So let's map it to the Y right now. So see that dollar, see that 4MA or 4SA or 4TR? Yep. The, the tiny G guys are giving you the hint on what the command is. So you type dollar sign 4MA equals 1. MA equals 1. And that'll set it to the Y. But now we got to change the polarity. So see that 4PO, M4 polarity, normal reverse? I would say dollar sign four P O equals one. Equals one. Okay, hit enter. By the way, you can hit the up arrow to go through previous commands. They're also okay. in that that arrow up button to the left. All your history, in case you've got to go back and look at stuff. So now I would just type, you know. Dollar four, or hit the up arrow to get back to dollar four, and then hit enter. So that looks good. Type dollar two. I want to make sure that's set to normal polarity, and this is set to reverse polarity. Yeah. So you now can hook up your other y-axis motor to that fourth driver. <clears throat> Just make sure that the um, that the step angle and the travel per revolution are configured correctly. Okay. If you're on a shape oak, did you do NEMA 23s or 17s on the 23. Y? Okay, so let me see what mine is really quick. Um, they've got he's got some standard configs. Yeah. But um, I did a, I did my own measurements to just make sure things were good. Okay. And. Um, Wrong tiny G. It's so funny. I have like multiple tiny G's now. <laughs> it's 
I gotta make sure I've got the correct one selected. Okay, let me see what mine is set to. Dollar sign two is um yeah, it's on my Y. So I'm at um one point four three eight six inch in terms of my travel per revolution. Okay. So maybe just jot that down. I think you could probably use this is stuff that's really good in the wiki where they've got those shape oka configs. Also, I found that using TGFX to do this config was really easy, but I agree with you that getting all that running is pretty tough. Um, uh, what was the, you said travel per revolutions? What was your I number? had one point four three eight six inches, not millimeter, by the way. Okay. Yeah, 1.4386 inches. <clears throat> and again, that was from me measuring it, but I think um, that was consistent with what other folks found. Okay. I I don't think uh, getting it set up was too overly difficult. Like I said, I was coming at this from uh, just ignorance, I guess. Like I had, I wasn't entirely sure what half the stuff I was reading in the wiki. I mean, like you said, it was step by step there, but just not knowing how to exactly all the tricks like coding and stuff like that I can definitely see I need to do a little bit of homework so hey do you have any G code files you can drag in here just to do a final touch or do you um, not really have any handy <clears throat> I'm not sure I could probably find hello world quickly ah uh, don't worry about it all you do is though is you drag it to the middle of the browser and just kind of hold it there till it highlights um, oh. and then you're good you know so I think you're good. I agree. I'm I'm very happy. <laughs> so, okay. Fantastic. Well, happy uh, happy um, milling, and then uh, I would love to get videos if you can make any of like your first run or anything, and and post them in the Google Plus community for Chili Pepper. I think folks are really liking seeing what other people are doing. Yeah, I will. Uh... I'll jot that down right now. I'll uh, definitely get something up there as soon as I get it. Um, yeah, I ordered a mechanical kit for my Shape Oko, and there was a couple pieces I missed and wanted to modify kind of mid-build, so I'm just waiting on a package from Inventables. It takes a little bit longer being in Canada, so yeah. Once, yeah. once I get those in, I should be starting and to play around. Then you'll start pimping out your machine like the rest of us, adding webcams all over it and lighting and... <laughs> I can barely get the thing going, and you're talking about upgrades already. I don't you'll, know if you, you you'll get a. You got to get yourself a little blue uh, diode laser to start cutting stuff, or you know. I don't know. Can you still see my webcam, or? Uh no, I'm I'm uh, seeing oh, your, your screen. screen shared. Yeah, that's yeah. Are you right. showing your setup? Yeah, I'll give you a quick glance here. I made it a little bigger. Oh sweet, yeah. So I built a frame on it, so it'll be a little bit sturdier. So I'll try and do this and hold. No, oh, that looks great. So you've just got a, a much longer axe, but your Y is still the normal size. Yeah, Ys are still the same length. Like NEMA 23s. Um, I've got the. Uh, you see uh, there the. Uh, it looks super hot. Yeah. The VW uh, 660 spindle ready to go there. Nice. And, uh, I did okay, so you don't have your Z hooked up yet. No, I don't. I that's I I bought the the stepper upgrade and I totally left out the. I, I did it on the weekend. I was half asleep and just ordered the whole kit, so I forgot that. But I did realize that I was going to have um, Z clearance issues, so I did a little write up on the Shapeoko forum there about hacking down that plate. It's not as it's not like it used to be. You oh, kind of right. see that piece is missing there. So yeah. That now I've got. Um, the mount solid up against there, but I have no clearance issues. That so. looks great. And then, wait, is that dual um, maker slide on the X, that's not standard, is it? Uh, yeah, that that was standard Shape Oko 2. Oh, was it Shape Oko 2? Okay. Maybe they even added... Well, okay, maybe I lost track of what they added on the Shape Oko 2. Yeah, that was stock. It, uh, the Shape Oko 2 was uh, standard dual X and standard... Dual Y motors, so right. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and they made everything all metal for the most part, because uh, that definitely helped add the rigidity. 
Yeah, and that's why I kind of built up my own frame that way too um, because being a wood shop, I don't want to leave it out all the time. I want it to be make it mobile. So yeah. um, right now it's pretty – it's not too bad. I mean, I don't have the router on there, but to lift it up and move it around and tuck it in a shelf or put it wherever I need to while I'm not using it. So what almost could be nice then is mount the tiny G to it or near it with like a Raspberry Pi. Uh, yeah. with a, like a little Wi-Fi dongle or Ethernet, and then it's almost even more movable. Although, frankly, you could always yank the USB from the laptop and be done, but especially if you're doing wood, sometimes it's nice to not keep an expensive computer next to it. Yeah, I have a fairly good dust collection system in my shop, so... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I yeah, wasn't I too worried about that, okay. and uh, that sort of okay. thing. I see most guys... Looks great. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait to see your first there. run, then, because that is a nice extended build you did. Yeah, I figured. Well, I was. I had the, my my finger hovering over the place order button on uh, Inventables website for just a standard kit, and I was like, "Oh, I'll upgrade later." And I was yeah. like, "No, just too cheap for that." I was like, "It's easier to spend more money on it now than to have a bunch of spare parts left over from the original build." So I was like, "I'll just." I agree with you. In fact, did you do you still have to do your own threading of the uh, maker slide? Yeah, I did. Yeah, see, that's a pain. So just do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it well, the right way the first time. Yeah, exactly. And, well, and that's it. I had to thread extra rods too to build my frame and all that because it's one big square and then all in between and yeah. yeah was... So I, you I... bought some extra eighty twenty uh, stuff for the base frame. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I'll try and show you again. Yeah, where'd you buy the eighty twenty from, by the way? Because I I've been looking to buy some and or sir, no, sorry, it's all twenty twenty on the twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Get some of this stuff out of the way here. Did you just get that online somewhere, just eBay, or you, did you go uh, I figured you... it was all. It was easier just to order it all from uh, Inventables. So okay, yeah, they had everything there, and then and then I, I assume enough. you're, What's you're that? probably gonna put a like a piece of MDF on it as like a wasteboard. Yeah, one solid piece of MDF. I didn't bother ordering that because. Uh, Shipping up to Canada on a piece of MDF that I have in my garage seemed a little ridiculous. Yeah, and, exactly. And uh, there's uh, a guy on YouTube that does a lot of Shape Ogo stuff, Winston uh, Winston Moy, I think is his name. M O Y is his last name. Yeah. He's got a lot of crazy videos, and uh, he's modified his machine quite a bit too. But uh, what he kind of gave me inspiration to use the Shape Oko to run in and drill a bunch of countersunk holes, and then uh, use little threaded nuts. Screw those into the waste board, and as your holder. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Like, and of course, you should use your shape Boko to create all those holes. Yeah, that seems like yeah. You need a specialty bit to drill all these holes. He's like, or a CNC router. So I picked up a bunch of these little threaded rods. Oh, nice. They're threaded on the inside and then on yeah. the outside as well. So just like a quarter inch bolt. Screw it down. I can cut my own clamps and everything. So. Oh, that is now. I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go check out this guy's videos. But yeah, you know, it's funny, I don't. I don't do that much milling. I do well. I do like PCBs, but then I do like laser cutting. So I end up sort of with different needs, you know. Yeah, for sure. But. Well, cool. I should get going here. It was good. Yeah. Was thanks very much. For time. I appreciate it. Yeah. That worked out well. Uh, it was fun. All right. Good yeah. luck with everything, Dustin. Yeah, I'll keep you posted how it goes. Okay, bye. Thanks.